Hey, welcome. Today we're going over Affinity Publisher 2's data merge, answering your questions with some answers. A couple of you asked, how do you go through and actually export your business cards as a PNG, a JPEG, or a PDF as individual files? We're going to be going over that. How do you go through and add multiple data merges per page? Going over that. And also, how do you use hyperlinks in a data merge? We're going over that. So let's hop into Google Sheets and then get into Affinity Publisher, and we'll be all good to go. We're making a quick stop here in Google Sheets just to show you what it is that our CSV file is looking like so that way if you want to go ahead and follow along you can know what it is and what it looks like. We have our first name, last name, department, a couple hobbies, and then the Twitter handle and then the link to that actual Twitter account. Sheet 2 is going to be for our products, this is going to be our actual product, our price, our description, an image for the product, a call to action, and then the link that the call to action is going to actually link to. So we're going to start out with our business cards. We're going to go to window, bring up our data merge manager, put that in the bottom corner, and then go back to window, go to references, pull up our fields, and we'll have this up here. Now we can go through and create a little rectangle. Just imagine that is somebody's, you know, profile picture or, you know, face profile shot, um, you know, whatever it is. We're going to go and import our actual CSV file. Go here and create a first name and a last name. And we'll make these a little bit bigger so that way you can actually see them. This is going to be their Twitter handle. Make that a little bit bigger as well. Now to actually go through and add a link to your data merge, highlight the text that you want to be linked, right click, insert hyperlink and instead of putting our link here we're going to go from data merge have the field be our link that's what i caught that's what i called the heading at the very top of our spreadsheet was link so this will be whatever column header you have on your csv file put that there we'll put their department and then we'll put their hobbies boom make that just a little bit bigger so now we have our business card we can go through and hit generate and you'll see now we've got ellie davis her Twitter handle is at Ellie. She's in sales, loves shopping and driving. Harris Johnson, he's got his handle. All these are here. All right, and now we want to go through and actually export this as an image. Go to our export, change this as a JPEG, and we'll name this business. Boom. And now each one of our business cards is saved as an actual image file. So that's pretty cool. There isn't an easy way to rename these ones. They just export as whatever you name the file, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now to actually export as a PDF is a little bit more of a process. We have to first export everything as one big PDF. So we're going to change it to PDF. We'll do high quality. And if you want each business card to be its own thing, make sure you choose all pages. Right now, it's our only option. If you have a thing with side-by-side -side pages, you might have an option for all spreads. Um, so it's up to you what you want to choose, but we're going to choose all pages. Export. In temp, this is going to be business, business PDF. And this first one that we open is going to be all of them all in one PDF. It's the first step. We're going to get there. Now you need to open up either Affinity Photo or Affinity Designer. Either one. We just need to have something with the actual export persona in it. You can drag or open it up with Affinity Designer. Load all pages and you'll see now we have all of our different PDF pages here. If you want to go through and rename them, you can rename them here. You can change page 9 to max. Boom and then it changes it. There isn't a way to actually rename them all in one go. I believe Affinity is working on adding scripting to this, but it's not out yet at the current moment. So you might build it in the future, go through and create a program that takes the you know data from like your CSV file and actually goes and you know renames all these pages based on that. But for right now, the best you can do is actually go through and just um, rename these manually. So to actually export these up here in the top left, go to export persona. We're going to go to our layers and click on all of them. So page one, all the way to page 10, click on create slice. We can go to our slices over here and you'll see right now the selection is grayed out and it wants to export them all as a PNG. We need to go to our default, select anything. We're going to do PDF for print. Once you change the default, it opens up this preset option up here. Now we can go down here, you'll see it still says PNG, but once we choose PDF digital high quality, 
that goes away now they're going to be exported as a pdf and not a png so once this disappears you're all good this part's a little bit tricky so make sure you uh kind of pay attention and be sure to select the right one that you want to export as the right format once you've got everything selected we can go down here to export slices we will export this to our temp folder and export pull this up and now it's a little out of order because i renamed them but here is adam anderson and then we've got all of our other ones page three thomas brown so now they are all in here as their own unique files whether it's an image or a pdf so there you go there's that part so we're jumping back over in Affinity Publisher now. We're going to go through and actually add multiple data merges per page. We're going to use the data merge layout tool and you can select however big of a page you want. I'm just going to go to our margins. A couple things here, you can increase the gutter size and that changes up the space in the middle of the page. Uh, when you do that, it create it keeps your actual bounding box and just makes all of your cells smaller. But if you want to go through and keep your boxes the same size and move the actual thing over you can preserve the cell value and then do that we're gonna make that zero and we'll be fine there rows and columns pretty self-explanatory maybe you want to do uh, some shipping labels or address labels or that's how you do that and also you can go through and you can also go through and change the size of these with the actual box here in like the actual ui so if you need to go through and change that record offset normally this is going to start out at row one two three four if you change this to record offset one it'll start out at two three four five and so on and so on record advance normally this is at one it'll start out at one two three four record advance will go one three five seven so we would only get two of our pages here so it skips one basically Record origin, you can see this starts out at different places. We'll show the record order just to show you that it ends up going here and then down. You see those arrows change. And you can change the way that this ends up going, whether it goes vertically first uh, with this little two different layout orders here. Now we're gonna go through and actually create our images here. So we'll go through, there's the image for that. We'll create a text box for the product name. We'll create one for the price whoops i keep grabbing all these handles descriptions and then a call to action so just like the first one we'll go through and make this our image whoops i, I put an actual uh gray box there instead of the image so now we can go through once you choose a picture frame do that inside here we'll do our product and then we'll do our price. Now you don't ever get to actually see these kind of until you actually add something in here. It's kind of a little deceiving, but once you once you start adding stuff, you'll see that it then follows through and adds everything else here. Oops, we're gonna do our call to action here. And then again, highlight the text that you wanna add the hyperlink to, insert a hyperlink from data merge, and then choose that header column that you wanna use. So it's gonna be link. So now your product, price description, call to action, boom. Now we will generate, say yes. Why did that? Oh, because I added the picture frame outside of the data merge uh, layout tool. So no, we won't save that. We'll go through, we'll drag this. You can see now the picture comes in for all of them. So make sure if you're going to add something after, make sure you add it into the uh, little group down here. Everything gets added to a, a group. So double check that before you export it. Now you'll see we have something else messed up as well. We need to go through and I think we have these set as record advance two. So you'll see we ended up skipping it from one to three or two to four. We'll see something, something's messed up. We need to go through and fix it. Record advance one. There we go, perfect. Now go to generate and you'll see we have all four options. So Snapmaker Artisan, Snapmaker 2.0, spinning shoe and instagram carousel template so we got all four of these now we can go through and export this as a pdf we'll export this here and say product and then we can go through and actually uh open up the product page and here is all of our data merges all nice pictures headings and of course when you're going to go actually go through and do yours you might bold this and actually add some little bit of uh fonts to it but for right now very simple and the download now link actually works it takes you over to shoptusher.com and you can go through and get your link 
your models, you can get your spinning shoe, your Instagram carousel template, whatever you'd like, but these are all working. Now, what if you wanna have more of an organic look? You don't want it to be so just rigid, you know, in a square. You can actually go through and change this to column one and row one. We'll move this down to here. And then we can go through and copy this and put this kind of however we want in this sort of weird organic look. Now when we generate this, you'll see it still works properly. Everything still follows and flows. When you copy these though, sometimes if you don't copy like the original one and you copy the third one or the second one and you just start pasting them all over the place and moving them around, it doesn't actually like go based on the order in the layers. It just goes on whenever you first copied it or something. It's a little bit weird. So play around with it if you're gonna do that, uh, just know that it's not exactly the easiest thing to do. All right, well, thank you so much to everyone who left those questions in the comments of the previous video. I hope I was able to help you out and uh, explain everything to the full extent that you were hoping for. If you still have questions, you can leave them in the comment section down below. It could be about data merge, it could be about Affinity Publisher, photo, designer, any of them. It's all good. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. And until next time, take care.